Welcome back. My name is still Nate, and I'm here for Disgaea. I'm guessing you are too. We've gained a decent amount of stats so far through various means, if you've been watching my video series. And now we're going to do something a little bit different. As with most RPG games, you can get powerful gear in Disgaea to boost your character's ability. But unlike most RPG games, Disgaea 5, in traditional Disgaea fashion, has a ridiculous amount of depth to its gear system including how you actually get the best gear in the first place. The first thing to understand is that every item in Disgaea is ranked by number, 1 being the worst and 40 being the best. You can't see this rank in game. Not only that, but there is a normal and Land of Carnage version of almost every item. All the Land of Carnage items are above the ranks of the normal ones. So you can imagine them being almost like rank 41 to rank 80 items instead. If we want max stats, we're going to want to get Land of Carnage rank 40 weapons and some armor too. The problem is, they can be a little tedious to get. Unlike other Disgaea games, Disgaea 5 actually has 3 of each rank 40 weapon instead of just 1. We're going to take a look about how to get the three different types. First of all, we'll use the method that's most similar to previous games. There's a boss deep in each item world called the Item God 2. If you reach an Item God 2 in a rank 39 Land of Carnage weapon, they will be holding the rank 40 weapon of that type. You can then simply steal it from them. This means you need to be on the lookout for rank 39 weapons for this. You can find them deep in the item world for high ranked weapons. I'll link to a chart of the item's ranks in the description. There are a few parameters to remember when you do this. The level of the item needs to be at least 80, and its rarity needs to be at least 50. You should set your item path to mystery rooms, as you'll need to boost your rarity through defeating enemies in these rooms. Another way of increasing rarity is by using the item assembly. It's almost the same as the dark assembly, but you use item points instead of mana. Increase rarity to above 50 through these two methods, and get your level over 80 through the usual methods, then you can just skip floors until you reach floor 99. Use a Mr. Genty's exit on floor 99 and save your game. Then you can jump back in and try and steal the weapon. If you fail, quit and reload your save. Use the thief's unique ability, steal from behind, and slow the speed of the enemy to maximize your chances. Remember, a normal attack from a gun will lower an enemy's speed. Once you have the first rank 40 weapon of a type, you can try and get the second. The second rank 40 weapon is a little more tedious. Once one of your characters has 100 in their weapon skill level, switch to them as your main character. That means they're the character you walk around the base with. Then, you're simply going to need to fly through floors in your new rank 40 weapon. Be aware that you might also run into duplication rooms using this method. Eventually you'll enter a very rare room, which has a floating weapon of the same type in which you entered. As long as your main character has a hundred in a weapon skill, you should be able to obtain it. Otherwise, it will reject you and you'll have to try again. The final rank 40 weapon you can get is probably the hardest. It's the final reward of the Neverworld research system. Much like items, the Neverworlds here are ranked 1 to 40, and then they have Land of Carnage ranks 1 to 40 as well. You have to keep completing missions until you eventually discover a rank 40 Land of Carnage Netherworld. Research this and you'll unlock a fight with a boss overlord. 
Unfortunately, you can't simply steal the weapon here. You have to actually defeat the stage. And they tend to have incredibly high stats. I would recommend that you keep resetting the stage for favourable conditions, and then use some cheap tactics to win. Be inventive here, it's a difficult challenge. Once you have your rank 40 weapon, it's time to improve it. Level it up, add innocence to it, and try and reach its maximum potential. In future, I may do an in-depth item leveling guide to help with this, but for now, Let's have a look at aptitudes. Each character has aptitude for each stat. This is a percentage. It signifies what percentage of the stat given by gear is actually gained by a character. For example, if a character equips a sword that gives 1000 attack and he has an aptitude of 200%, he is actually gaining 2000 attack from that sword. The maximum aptitude a character can have is 300% in each stat. This means you're essentially tripling the power of your gear. Needless to say, this is very useful. You can use some abilities to increase your aptitude, but you're better off getting a permanent increase. Reincarnating will give characters a boost to their aptitude each time, to a maximum of 25% extra. And as for the rest, well, I hope you like board games because you're going to have to take on the character world many times. Defeating enemies and landing on equipment squares increases your aptitude. You can also choose to boost the stat of your choice by 5% at the end of each run. There is a rare chance of running into a boss, or you can pass a bill to guarantee that you'll run into it in the next time you visit the character world. Defeating her increases your aptitude by a small chunk. You can also consider getting the Trapezohedron. It's a powerful rank 40 symbol item. You can also match the rarity of your character's gear to get the same bonus, which increases its stats by an extra 10% each. Also remember to breed some rare innocents and store them on your new equipment. And as usual, the rabbit hole goes on forever. And so I'll be back soon to fine tune your characters and push them to the very top. I hope you found this useful. Subscribe for more Disgaea guides and a bunch of other dumb stuff too. Thanks for watching.